Hi everyone, Ryan here from Fight Game Analysis, and today we are going to be talking about the upcoming fight between Calvin Cater and Giga Chikadze. But before we jump into that, if you enjoy the content, please go ahead and click on the like button and also subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate your support. All right, so we've been waiting for a little while for some UFC fights, and we are getting a good main event. Calvin Cater versus Giga Chikadze. Now, Calvin Cater, we know him. Dude's been on a big run, been doing a lot of good work, knocking out a lot of people, doing very good performances in the octagon. Gets in there against Max Holloway. Man, what a fight that was. Man, man, man. But I got to be honest, Calvin Cater got lit up. It was the Max Holloway show for the most part. Calvin Cater didn't get shot out, did some good work, but really the story of that night was Max Holloway. Tough one for a guy who had been doing so good, coming all the way up, knowing that if he got past Max Holloway in that fight, he was likely to get a title shot and gets just knocked back down the ranks a little bit. Standing across from him, Giga Chikadze. This guy's something else, man. He's like 7-0, 8-0 since coming to the UFC. Before coming into MMA, he had a professional kickboxing background, and you can tell right away. This dude comes out there, and he is all about the striking. Well, side note, as if we didn't know that already in his last fight with Edson Barbosa, we saw the way he handled those chokes. Not very impressive. Not very impressive at all. Ended up having to knock him out with his hands. That's fine. That's well and good. But as if we didn't realize that this man was a striker already, he just went and showed us again in his last fight what his bread and butter is. But that's cool because his striking is good. His striking is really good, particularly his kicks. Now, what I find most interesting about him is the distance. He fights at a kicking distance 100% of the time. He does not like to get inside at all. Now, you know he's getting some good training on the inside. You know he's getting some good training with his hands and the sparring partners and everything. He's over there at King's MMA, right, training underneath Rafael Cordero with guys like uh, Fabricio Verdum and Calvin Gaslam and things like that. So he's training with top-notch people. But he does not like to fight on the inside at all. For the most part, when you see Giga, you want to see him at kicking distance. You want to see him do his best work. It's not going to be at a boxing range. It's not going to be in the clinch. It's not going to be up against the cage. It's going to be at the kicking distance. And his kicks are something else, man. We saw what he did against Jamie Simmons. <laughs> First and takes that left kick, lights him up to the body and then to the head. Man, when he kicked dude in the head, it sounded like somebody was hitting a 400-yard drive off the tee with a golf club or something. That was, a, that was an interesting sound that that one made. Saw what he did against Cub Swanson in the follow-up fight. Dude, that kick that he's got is nasty. Now, don't get me wrong. He's got some good hands. So I'm not really like, I'm not trying to talk bad about him. He explodes with him, gets off some good combinations, has a decent counter right hook, very fast, very crisp, very accurate, but his game's not built around his hands. His game's not built around his boxing. His game is all built around his kicking. Then standing across from him, you've got a guy who's pretty much the exact opposite. He's a striker too, obviously Calvin Cater, but his game is pretty much all built around his boxing. Now Calvin Cater, I've been a fan of him for a while. I love the way he does his work. Really good jab. Knows how to fight tall. Knows how to fight long. Really good jab. Really good right hand. Knows how to get really good extension on that jab and then builds everything off of it. Love the way he uses the right hand in the sense that he can lead with it. He can counter with it. He's got this shot with his last fight against Max Holloway, probably about midway through the first round. Max Holloway's coming in, closing the distance, and Kelvin Cater just sets up on him and the timing, the accuracy, the form, everything is beautiful. He catches Max Holloway with what was just can't be described as anything other than a freight train of a right hand. I mean, just straight from the shoulder. Boom, he just catches him right in the chin. Max Holloway doesn't even flinch. Comes in and continues to throw his combination. And as I'm watching that fight, I'm like, those are the types of things that 90% of the guys that you're going to come up against, that's it. The fight's over right there, midway through the first round. Holloway had come in, he was getting some work done, but as soon as Calvin Cater lands that right hand against the majority of people, that's it, night's over. He's got really good power, and that shot was beautiful. You know Max Holloway didn't see it coming, and those are the punches that hurt you the worst, the ones that you don't see coming. But that's why Max Holloway's a champion, man. That's why Max Holloway is something else, because he can take those shots and just keep it moving. I mean, it was so quick and so sudden, the announcers didn't even pick up on it. Nobody even mentioned it. But you're watching it, and it was, man, it looked like it's, Holloway's head snapped around. It was something else. It reminded me of some of the fights 
reminded me of some of the shots that Conor McGregor landed on Nate Diaz in their first fight. That very first one in the first round, he landed some ferocious shots on Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz just walked through him like it was nothing. No big deal. That's what was happening when Calvin Cater was hitting Max Holloway. But you got to remember, not everybody's Max Holloway. Not everybody's going to be able to take those shots. Right? Now, as good as his boxing looks, Calvin Cater's got some flaws, man. I mean, let's stop talking about the boxing for a minute. Let's talk to what's the biggest flaw of all, the leg kicking, right? We saw Moicano tear the legs up. We saw Jeremy Stevens tear the legs up. We saw Max Holloway even land some kicks. His legs are there to be hit. He's gotten a little better than since earlier in his career. But those legs are there to be kicked, man. Probably because of his boxing stance. He's just a little bit heavier on that front leg. Doesn't really have the experience of checking 10 million kicks as though he had come up doing Muay Thai. So it is what it is. But those legs are there to be kicked. And he's standing across from a man who knows how to do some very good kicking. So that's going to be problematic for him. And the other hand is, he can be countered. Holloway was able to tear him up. Right now, Holloway tore him up with volume. Was able to overwhelm him at times. Jeremy Stevens was able to overwhelm him at times early in the fight. If you really start to get off with your offense on Calvin Cater, right? Think about Zabit. You start out early. You start to get off on him. He'll shut down his offense a little bit. He'll block the shots. He'll move around. He'll cover up. You get off five, six shots, back up, circle out. You can get off some shots on him. He won't always be there to counter. He won't always answer back. You can get him to shut down a little, particularly early in fights. That's number one. Number two, Ige was able to see some success against him. Now, how was Ige able to do it? He was able to do it through accuracy and timing. Dan Ige isn't faster than Calvin Cater, but he's able to get some of his shots off. He was able to lead and get some off. He was able to counter and get some off. Countered on that jab a few times pretty well. Calvin Cater's there to be hit. So this makes for a very, very interesting fight, right? Because here's the way I see this going. If this fight is fought at a kicking distance, Calvin Cater loses. That's it. That's all there is to it. Chikadze is way too strong, way too fast. Those kicks come off at just angles and the timing and how fast he closes distance. He follows up with punches. If you're trying to stand in front of him, which Calvin Cater does for the most part, he's in front of his opponent. If you're going to stand in front of him and you're going to be a kicking distance, you're going to get torn up. So Calvin Cater's going to have to back him up. He's going to have to back him up against the cage. He's going to have to get him into a boxing distance. Now, is he going to be able to do that? I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. That's going to be the big question. Where is the fight going to take place? Because Chikadze will let you back him up. He'll let you push him back. We saw that in the fight with Edson Barbosa. But the fight was still fought at kicking distance. It still wasn't in at the boxing range. Obviously, Barbosa wasn't going in for any takedowns or anything like that. It was still fought at the kicking distance. And if this fight happens at kicking distance, it's over for Calvin Cater. All that being said, let's not forget the fact that Chikadze's wide open for some shots. He's not that difficult to catch. Barboza caught him a few times. And ultimately, as difficult as this fight is predict, because of the way these styles match up, what each man has the ability to do inside the octagon, I'm going to take the underdog on this one. I'm going to go with Calvin Cater. I think he's going to be able to get that jab off a little bit, understand the distance. I think he knows that those kicks are coming. And he's going to counter it with a right hand. Giga keeps his left hand low. That's going to put him in a very bad position when Calvin Cater goes to throw that right hand. I think he's going to counter the kicks with the right hand. I think he's going to come in there and he's going to try to push him back and close the distance. Cut off the octagon. And I'll tell you one other thing that may become a problem. Going into his fight with Jamie Simmons. Giga Chikadziak was saying that 145 was kind of a tough cut, man. He's like, I want to get this guy out of there early. This weight cut was kind of difficult. Should this go to three rounds, I might gas a little bit. We've never seen him go five rounds. This is a five-round fight. This is a main event. We know Calvin Cater can make it five rounds. He went five hard rounds against Max Holloway. We don't know that about Chikadze. We don't know if he's going to be able to make it five rounds. But we know he had trouble before making weight. We know that he was concerned about it just two fights ago. How's that going to look, man? Calvin Cater is not going to slow up. He's got power. He's going to carry it late. When he starts to get closer, 
as the fight moves on, starts out at a further distance, as it moves on, starts to get at a closer and closer distance, gets into that boxing range much easier than before. I see Calvin Cater being able to get those shots off. Goes to the body extremely well. He's an underdog in this one, plus 170. Think he's going to come out with the win. So let me know what you guys think. Am I underestimating what Giga brings to the table? Is he going to be able to get those kicks off early and often? Stop whatever Cater plan has planned? Or is Calvin Cater going to be able to get back to his winning ways? Let me know what you guys think.